So today I thought I would just talk to you about apples. So we grow two different varieties of apples. Uh, we've got the Lady of the Snow and your Golden Delicious. And we've been picking them now for a few weeks, but it was now time to harvest the entire tree. So we have a lot of apples to process yesterday. So um, we made several products. Uh, firstly, we dehydrated a lot of apples. They store really well. They'll store for years. Um, and you can use them just as a snack like this, or you can rehydrate them to add for cooking. We also made a lot of apple sauce, which we canned, and that'll stay shelf stable for a very long time. And you can use this um, in your cooking instead of a sugar, like for cakes. Um, you can also add to it in your pies and things like that. Uh, and then we also made an apple pie filling. So this one is flavoured with cinnamon and cloves and honey. Um, and this is one that actually we also made some apple pies yesterday. So this is also the apple pie filling. And again, shelf stable. We water bathed these so they'll stay um, good for quite a while in the cupboard. Um, we also have a lot in the fridge and we'll eat them um, every day as, you know, our fruit until they um, go, you know, start going soft and then we'll probably dehydrate or do more sauce or more jam fill, uh, pie filling. Um, and as you can imagine, all these things here required us to peel them and core them. So we have a lot of peels and core, uh, cores. So I've decided to make a vinegar, which is called an apple scrap vinegar, as opposed to apple cider vinegar. So apple cider vinegar is made from the juice of the apples, um, whereas apple scrap vinegar obviously is made with the scraps. So it's probably a bit less potent than your standard apple cider vinegar, but still I would imagine would, you would still get all those amazing health benefits from the apple cider vinegar. So just a little background, I suppose, of apple cider vinegar. Um, vinegar's been around for forever and traditionally would have been used to preserve food, which is still what we do now when we make pickles and such, we use vinegar. Um, apple cider vinegar, on the other hand, is a fermented uh, product. So it's a raw product. So um, you've got those health benefits of prebiotics and probiotics um, within the vinegar. So you can still certainly use it for preserving, um, but you also can use that as a bit of a health tonic, I guess, because of its raw fermented properties, as with any fermented food. So um, you can use it just to drink it. And if you were to drink it, you would dilute it in water. So you just have a tablespoon or two in a glass of water or whatever uh, water I think would be best. Um, and then so you, that's feeding your gut flora. So it's good for your internal health, um, for your gut. There's also been some studies where it can aid in weight loss um, and it's good for cholesterol and keeping your blood sugar in check. Um, but of course, you know, if you wanted to go down that path, certainly do some more research and talk to your doctor if you wanted to use it for that. Um, you can also use it externally. It's really great for a hair rinse. Um, it's good as a toner for your skin. Again, you want to dilute that because it is very acidic. Um, but so there's lots of benefits for apple cider vinegar. Um, we, I've also done a bit of a tonic where I've included garlic and ginger and star anise and thyme and rosemary and all these things in a vinegar and left it for um i left it for two months you probably only needed to leave it for four weeks um, and then strain uh, the pieces off and you've got a really lovely uh, tonic that you can use just as your general well-being and health um, so to make your apple scrap vinegar of course if you wanted to do apple cider vinegar you just need to start with the juice um, for me, I wanted to keep the juice to, for this. So um, I've used the scraps. So within the scraps or on the skin, there's a natural yeast. So you don't need to add any yeast. So um, for every one kilo of scraps, you would add three tablespoons of sugar and cover it entirely with water. And then you would uh, get a plate or a weight and you would submerge everything so there's nothing on the top and just cover it over the 
for the cover, you want it so that gas can sk still escape because there is a fermentation process that's going to happen, um, but you don't want anything to be able to get into it. So just a loose fitting lid will work really well. Um, and you would leave that for about four weeks, I would expect. I'm going to check on it periodically um, just to make sure things are going along well. Um, and th there's going to be stages. So you'll know when it's ready, when it tastes like vinegar. Um, but pretty much the yeast from the skin um, is going to feed on the sugars that's in the apple and turn to alcohol. And then once that alcohol um, changes into acid, that's when your vinegar will be ready. Um, of course, some people will probably stop at the alcohol stage, um, but I want to make vinegar. So um, I just wanted to share with you, I guess, the process of the vinegar, and I'll, I'll update you on how it's going. Um, and you might see on a previous post that there's um, uh, an apple scrap vinegar, uh, some photographs. So you can look back at the photos to see what I've done there. Um, but yeah, so I just thought I would share with you um, how we process our abundance of apples. I hope you enjoyed the video.